In this video, we are tracking severe weather in the South Central US. The Storm Prediction Center has put out an enhanced risk of severe weather with a 30% chance of damaging winds. Then we're going to look at the medium range forecast to find out when the next storm is coming. Welcome back y'all, Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Before we get into today's weather forecast discussion, I have to show you one of the craziest weather videos I've ever seen. Uh, well, weather related video, and, and I've seen a lot of weather videos. Okay, for some reason my mic wasn't recording on this scene, I'm not sure what happened, but basically I'm just babbling on there about how crazy this video is because what you're seeing here is actually lightning striking a golf ball in midair and it was caught on camera, uh, probably one of the only times, probably the only time uh, that something like this has ever been caught on camera. And uh, yeah, it's probably one of the more impressive videos I've ever seen. So uh, if you wanna see that again up close, I've got it on my Twitter, I retweeted it. So uh, yeah, <laughs> now let's talk about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And here it is, the big old complex of storms we've been talking about for days. It went through Nebraska, Kansas, at Missouri and Iowa and Illinois last night. It did pack a punch. Now, there were two different systems, right? There were two different separate areas of storms. The one that went through Iowa and Missouri and Illinois actually underperformed a little bit, thankfully. There were still a lot of reports of wind damage. We had a big tornado watch and a couple tornado warnings, uh, but the widespread straight line damaging wind event actually didn't occur in the way that we thought it would once again thankfully however this other system the uh, complex of storms that formed over here in Nebraska and it, that is now moving through the Missouri area that actually overperformed we saw a lot of wind damage out of this one huge ginormous hail especially in western Nebraska in excess of tennis ball size and we saw a lot of damage from that so you know uh, this is still a very strong storm system we've got a lot of energy out there still and this is still going to continue to to go on to the south and today it's going to affect places like Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Northwestern Arkansas and Southwestern Missouri. Those are going to be the hardest hit areas today. However, everybody from Northern Texas through much of Missouri, all the way over to Southern Indiana, Western Tennessee and Western Kentucky need to be on the lookout for some severe weather today because this is going to be a widespread event. And we can talk more about that on the weather models. All right, here we are looking at the old trusty HRRR. This is the high resolution rapid refresh model. This is what the radar could look like later on today. It's not exactly what the radar is going to look like. As we saw yesterday, uh, the HRRR predicted a big giant bow echo, almost like a derecho event for much of Missouri. Uh, but what we actually got was a late forming multicellular event that did eventually turn into a squall line, uh, but it just didn't look like what the HRRR showed. So we're going to take this with a grain of salt today, but we're still going to look at it as a possibility of what could happen. So here we are around 9 a.m. when this video goes up. We've got our complexes of storms moving across Missouri now. Also, we've got a little area of storms moving into the Owensboro and Evansville area of Kentucky and Indiana. That's actually going to continue to go east uh, this morning and, and into the afternoon and probably affect places like Cincinnati and Lexington and Louisville uh, with some stronger storms. But I don't think there's anything too crazy to worry about there. Once again, we've got this big low pressure system here that's spinning up, sending some cold air down behind it. And it's along that boundary here, especially with all this uh, moisture down here in the Gulf, that we're going to be watching for the development of big time storms. And once again, we do have have the very real possibility of a giant squall line with damaging winds forming today, okay? Just, just like we did yesterday. Uh, but I, I have a little bit more confidence today that that's actually what's going to happen because uh, instead of having two separate storm systems that are interacting with each other, we're basically just going to have one giant outflow boundary from this uh, low pressure system that is going to be driving these storms down to the south. And I do think we're going to see that straight line damaging wind threat in its all of its glory today. So if you're in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, watch out. All right, let's put this radar into motion and let's watch and see when these storms are going to start popping up. Looks to me like 3 or 4 p.m. That's going to be 2 or 3 p.m. Central Time. And we're going to see some big time storms start popping up around southeastern Kansas and southwestern and central Missouri, okay? Now, you see all this color over here in Illinois. This is mostly going to be heavy rain. It's You're really close to the low pressure system here and these storms really won't be allowed to uh, utilize all that energy in the atmosphere because there's so much stratiform rain and just a lot of cloud cover in that general vicinity. So you're going to have some heavy rain here in Southern Illinois, but I don't think that that's actually going to be uh, much of a problem as far as severe weather goes. The severe weather is going to be taking place down here. And we also have to watch these storms up here, actually, you know, right next to the low pressure system uh, as uh, possibly we could get some cold core storms forming up here with big hail and a very, very isolated tornado threat up there. But once again, main threat's going to be
be right here. Let's keep pushing it forward and let's watch what happens. We've got a multicellular, possibly supercellular line of storms moving through southwestern Missouri, southeastern Kansas, and northern uh, Oklahoma. It's at this point, 6 p.m., where these storms are going to be dropping some hail and they're also going to be dropping some downdrafts that are going to create some gust fronts with winds over 50, 60 miles an hour. Okay, so if you live in this area right here, north of Tulsa, in that little region right there, I do think there's a very good chance that we're going to see some uh, uh, pretty good significant wind damage today. So watch out for that. And then we're going to keep pushing this forward. And as you can see, as we go later on into the evening, everything's going to start consolidating. We had a big mess over here. We had a big mess down here. And now everything's just turning into one big clean line. And that's when, you know, we're going to start seeing even more instances of that straight line damaging wind problem. Okay, especially in North uh, West Arkansas, keep pushing this forward. As you can see here, we're going to have some strong winds moving through Oklahoma City at this point. And also this is this is also just going to be a really heavy rainmaker too. So we also have to watch out for the flash flooding potential. And we also have to watch out for the uh, tornado potential. Once again, the tornado threat is low with this system, but I can't help but notice that there is the possibility for some of these storms to pop out ahead of the main convection, move east and take advantage of that lower level jet stream and actually cause tornadoes, especially here in Oklahoma, okay? So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you have your weather radio charged up, your batteries in there and ready and everything. That way, if there is a tornado warning, it wakes you up tonight at 3 a.m. here uh, in Southern Oklahoma or Central Arkansas, uh, just in case you need to take shelter. But once again, at this point, I do believe the, the number one threat here is gonna be those straight line damaging winds through Memphis. We might even have some strong storms move through the Nashville region, uh, down through Little Rock and Pine Bluff. And then these storms are also gonna be moving through the Red River region into Texas around 3 to 4 a.m. But these are very quickly going to weaken, diminish, and completely die out as we get into the early morning hours on Sunday and towards noon. Uh, so that is actually really interesting. So that's actually good news for Louisiana as these storms really break up and just they, they don't go anywhere <laughs> after around uh, noon tomorrow. But if I push this forward a little bit more, you can still see that low pressure system is uh, circulating here and we've got all kinds of little outflow boundaries and areas where storms are going to form around it. So, you know, all through Texas, Louisiana, uh, the deep south, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, you're going to have the chance to see uh, some bigger storms tomorrow, but these are likely going to be isolated and the biggest threat here is going to be heavy rain and maybe some small hail here and there. Once again, the main threat is going to be this big line of storms that barrels through Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, maybe even parts of uh, Mississippi and Tennessee and Texas. All right. So once again, I think the apex, the, the most impressive time frame where we're going to see winds is right in here between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. Uh, in, in Oklahoma and Arkansas. Okay. So if you live up here, uh, definitely uh, get your guard up, be ready because things are going down. All right. Now, since the HRRR model didn't do very good yesterday, I think it's important that we also take a look at another uh, forecast model that has a little bit of a different solution. That way we know two different possibilities and we know all of the outcomes that can happen uh, from the storm system today. So uh, here we're looking at the NAM three kilometer model. It's a little bit of lower resolution model, but it handles storms in the summer uh, pretty well. So uh, we're still looking at that low pressure system with the cold core up here. We're still looking at all that stratiform rain and cloud cover in Illinois. And we're still looking at that uh, frontal boundary causing our storms here from Missouri down into Oklahoma. So let's see exactly what happens with this line of storms according to the NAM. Okay, so very similarly uh, to the HRRR, this is turning into a very long uh, line of showers and thunderstorms that's going to have embedded areas where some of these storms are bowing out uh, and causing straight line damaging winds. Okay, but this is actually orienting the whole system a little bit further north and east than the HRRR did. So we're still seeing storms down here in Oklahoma City and Tulsa, but it looks like the apex or the strongest area of uh, downward motion and where the strongest winds will be will actually be in uh, Missouri here, moving this way. So let's continue looking at that on the NAM. This also shows a much more broken line of storms. We've got three separate areas of concern here. We've got this one over here in Illinois, which probably won't amount to much of anything because once again, we've got all that cloud cover over here, really not a lot of instability or anything to work with. Uh, and then this one right here probably will pack a punch with some very strong winds. Once again, in Northwest Arkansas and Southern Missouri. So you gotta watch that. And then it's actually 
showing the most intense area of convection in Oklahoma, just south of Oklahoma City, uh, going down I-35 there with a giant multicellular system uh, with likely some very strong winds uh, moving south into the Red River region. And it does show pretty much the same thing as far as these storms weakening out uh, late tonight, early in the morning, uh, just like the HRRR did. And then tomorrow it shows the reformation of some isolated showers and thunderstorms as well. So a uh, pretty good agreement there between the NAM and the HRRR, just a little bit different on intensity and placement, okay? Uh, I think the NAM looks a little bit more realistic because our convective energy values are actually gonna be much lower today than they were yesterday. If we come back here to the HRRR, you can see pretty much the, the highest area of convective energy we get is right here in Kansas, maybe close to 4,000 joules per kilogram, uh, but it's not that widespread area uh, like we saw yesterday. And this could do one of two things. It could uh, really dampen the amount of severe weather that we see, or it could increase it because two to 3,000 joules per kilogram of Cape is plenty enough to get thunderstorms started. And actually what it may do is allow less thunderstorms to pop up in the beginning, uh, lowering the amount of cloud cover that we see out ahead of it and uh, utilizing the energy more efficiently for the thunderstorms that do form, therefore making those thunderstorms more uh, potent and more severe. The number one thing that you need to take home uh, from this presentation and from this forecast here, if you, especially if you live in the enhanced risk area, is that severe weather is possible today and you need to take whatever precautions are necessary for you if there was a situation where you could experience an isolated tornado, uh, some winds in excess of 60 miles an hour, and flash flooding, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the whole United States on the Euro model. We're starting off at 5 p.m. today and we're going to quickly uh, go through our current storm system that we're looking at obviously a lot of moisture out here in the eastern part of the United States where we're going to be seeing those severe thunderstorms and also just a bunch of general garden variety summer showers and thunderstorms all across the east coast as that gulf moisture is really infiltrating the area and that's not going to stop look at this we're all the way out here at Wednesday and we're still seeing those isolated uh, showers and thunderstorms and what's really interesting is we're going to have another little frontal boundary this may cause some more severe weather over here in the midwest and what's going to happen here is this is just going to set up across the Ohio Valley and just really dump a bunch of rain across a lot of the eastern part of the United States, especially here in the Ohio Valley and a little bit more towards the Midwest there in Missouri and Illinois. Uh, we are just going to see a lot of rain over the next couple of weeks in uh, this region right here. And some of us need it. Some of us are actually uh, seeing a deficit in rainfall. And some of us, depending on where you are, because everything's been so scattered this year, uh, probably could do without it. So by Monday, July 19th, some of us in western Kentucky could see over 10 inches of rain. Uh, also, there in Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, uh, just pretty much everywhere in this region right here is under the gun for some very heavy rain over the next little bit. And some of that's going to come, you know, over a long period of time, but some of it's going to fall pretty quickly. So we all have that uh, chance for isolated uh, flash flooding events over the next week or so. Now, the big story on the West Coast is just going to continue to be the heat and the dryness. OK, I, you know, there's not much more I can say about that. There's this big ridge over here that that's what's causing our, you know, increased uh, bad weather over here in this region uh, but over here in the west you, it's just allowing that warm air to just kind of pile up and it's getting caught behind the rocky mountains and there's nowhere for it to go it's just kind of sitting there we have just this unbearable heat uh, through much of the southwestern portion of the united states we're still looking at temperatures in the 100s to 110s to near 120 uh, for much of uh, california southern nevada southwestern uh, arizona and we still have those 100 degree temperatures going all the way up into Canada and of course in Eastern Oregon and Washington okay and we have a lot of problems out here from this okay this has been one of the uh, uh, driest and hottest spring and summer seasons on record for California and you know now we're entering in uh, that time of year where we're gonna start seeing a lot of wildfires and we already have uh, some big ones out there as you can see here this is the above ground smoke density uh, forecast model and we have some big wildfires going on here in Nevada uh, southern Oregon also up here in Idaho as well and once again, these are areas that are seeing incredibly dry weather and a, a lot of intense heat over the next week uh, with no relief in sight. And you can see for the first little bit here, the smoke's pretty stagnant and that has a lot to do with our stationary air mass. But we might have a little bit of relief with some uh, westernly and northwesternly winds as we get a little bit later on into the day and, and, and tomorrow. But this isn't going to help a lot, okay? It's just going to move that smoke around and we're going to see it kind of, uh, these two plumes may converge here and cause a lot of air quality problems here in southwestern uh, Idaho so that's what the uh, the fires are looking like right now on the west coast we're gonna keep checking in on that okay I, I know I often neglect the west coast but uh, I you know I live on the east coast and it's easy for me to be biased
biased. So uh, keep me honest and, and keep me uh, reminded <laughs> in the comments, okay? And that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you haven't yet, make sure you slap a like on this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn those notifications on. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.